Hello everybody, welcome to another Merlin cast, it is I, Merlin, I got OWC Cyborg with me. Hello. And uh, we're just going to get together and talk about some stuff for a while, um, and I am very tired, so yeah. I hope this probably won't be a two hour one. Right. Uh, actually, last uh, one of the last podcasts I was on, I think you liked the link actually, my, um, what, what were we talking about? Got, oh yeah, my, oh we're film fanatics, check it out, we, uh, we reunited and went over the top 50 highest grossing films last year, one of our thoughts. And that yeah. podcast was like almost two hours. Mm. That was long, but it was wow. good. So check that out, guys, if you're interested. Um, yeah, man, we, I just want to go over a couple things um, that I thought were interesting we could talk about relating to movies and TV and stuff. And I wanted to start off with something I know you just finished, True Detective Season 3. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about that because um, True Detective, I don't think I've ever talked about it on the channel, but I really liked Season 1 a lot. Like, I thought it was... Maybe a bit of a slow burn, but McConaughey, Harrelson, noir, detective stuff, uh, very dark, a lot of philosophical stuff going on there, but some of the best crime drama stuff I've seen in a long time. Right. Season two, couldn't really get into it. It seemed okay, but I just, yeah. I, I didn't finish it. Um, it and seemed like they changed the formula a little bit. It was a more, it was more, like, more straightforward, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it had the twists and turns, but a lot of your police procedurals have those. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it didn't feel, it didn't have the feel of the first one. All right. Um, and you finished the, the third season, and I've heard that from you and just in general that it's it's kind of connected to the first one. Mm -hmm. So I guess just give me, if you could, your impressions of True Detective as a whole and kind of a fairly spoiler free season three review, if you will. I, I'm curious. Like, because I, you just finished it, so I know it's pretty fresh in your mind. Yeah. Uh, well, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think that the feel was back from season one. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to season one in, in uh, even in case. You okay. Know, season one had this serial killer kind of thing, mm -hmm. mystery. Who is the killer? Season three has that too, but there's a missing. Missing child mm. um, that spans over decades, mm -hmm. um, and I like the way that I would say that Mahershala Ali is the main character, even though he co-stars with Stephen Dorff. But I think I would say he's the main character because, All right. um, light spoiler: his character now in the present is has dementia, like mm. he's going through. So he there's things that he remembers and some that he doesn't. And then when he does remember things, they come in and out at random times. And that's kind of, and that's how they navigate because as you watch season one, mm -hmm. different timelines. And yeah. they jump around. Well, then they do this more in this too, like season one. But, but through they, his like memories as an introduction. Exactly. That's pretty cool. So it's kind of like you're going through his mind. Oh. Of you know, how he remembers and doesn't remember things. Well, let me ask you then, with that technique, it, that sounds really interesting. I do like it when they do that. But if he has dementia, do they ever play around with the idea of like how accurate are these memories? Yes, they okay. do. They do. Because and then there's even a point, you know, there are a few points where he's even questioning himself. Am I think what I'm thinking right now is this really does this really happen? Mm -hmm. Is this or is this just a hallucination? Mm -hmm. Or is this in my mind? And in some, sometimes he knows that it's a hallucination, but he knows that that will help him get to the memory that he's trying to get to, huh. if that makes sense. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, if that makes sense. And I, I think that uh, when you see it, remember, we have to remind me when you do see it, because I think that the ending uh -huh. was pretty good. Pretty good? I think, well, very good. I'll very say. good. Okay. In my opinion... I think that they did an ending that <laughs> you said it was beautiful the other day. Yeah, you because said it was beautiful. When you when you watch the ending, you're thinking like, really? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what? Really? It's like a roller coaster in the ending. Uh huh. And then I, you sit back and you think about. You got to think of when you watch it. You got to think about the whole episode of the last episode because okay. you know it's only eight episodes and then how it is it's a slow burn uh -huh. so things start happening so the last <laughs> episode you pretty much get all your answers and more huh 
So you got to think about the whole episode and the way they did it, in my opinion, it's like an ending for everybody. Mm. Every possible way, every character's ending. Like mainly Mahershala Ali's character, because mm. to me, like I said, you're looking through his eyes. You get to see other characters' endings and what that would mean. And the way they ended it, I think that was the best way because you get to see... They did everything. They did, they did a way to do multiple endings in one ending. Excellent. So, you know, without saying any spoilers, that's how I'm going to... Cool. So, I just want to talk about that more in detail when you see it. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll have to get around to it eventually. Because, and to be honest, with... Uh, well, I guess we could talk about that briefly. Um, Game of Thrones, final season's coming up. Mm. I don't currently have HBO, but in this house, we're pretty big Game of Thrones mm. fans. Uh, so... I might have to get re-subscribed and then hey. check out True Detective, too. Hey, yeah. I've seen a couple other shows on there I want to check out as well, so I love HBO. HBO has great programming. Man, I... Usually, every Sunday, they they get me with something. Even their comedies. Yeah. Pretty com- good. Comedies are good. And I don't know what it is about them, but I they do the mafia stuff just so well. The crime yeah. drama. I love all that. Their crime yeah. stuff. Boardwalk Empire was fantastic. It was great. I didn't think I would like it, honestly. Really? I now I watch everything <laughs> on HBO like just I give it the benefit of the doubt uh-huh. because of stuff like that like I'm like yeah what is this the 1930s I don't know. <laughs> but it was great yeah it was great Buscemi probably maybe. yeah yeah um, but yeah there was that um, so we'll be checking that out uh, I recommend if everybody if you haven't seen it <laughs> watch it you know and if you haven't seen any True Detective I recommend season one too season two maybe if you're you don't have anything else to watch? Yeah, I mean, it didn't seem bad. Like, I was kind of curious, but I was like, I could tell it wasn't the same right. vibe. Right. Um, all right. Well, that's cool. I'm, I'm glad I got your point. I'll definitely let you know when I finally get around to seeing it. Yeah. Probably like a month or two from now, mm-hmm. at least. Cool. But I, I'm behind on everything, but I'm, I'm slowly getting caught up. Well, this is great because I'm behind on movies, so, you know. Movies, and, yeah. Well, and we're like reverse. Like, you got all the DC shows, and I know all the Marvel shows. Yeah. That's, that's kind of that's funny. <laughs> yep. But, um... But a movie we have not seen yet, but I think we both kind of want to see, mm-hmm. is Alita Battle Angel, which mm-hmm. it's really weird. I I have heard mixed things about this. Some people seem to not like it, mm-hmm. and some people are like, it's actually pretty good. And I'm right. like, an anime adaptation? I mean, it's. I think one thing for me is like, because it, I haven't actually watched the anime yet, I want to check it out. It's like a short OVA. Okay. I don't have attachment to it, so I'm like, I wouldn't know if they got it wrong. Right. But uh, there was one gentleman at Cosmonaut Variety Hour. He said that he felt that it followed an anime tropes beats very well. Hmm. Like, it was very, very accurate. But he thought that, for once, being very accurate to the source material kind of made it not work very well for a movie. Because you're trying to condense a lot into a movie. Oh, one of those. Interesting. But, I don't know. The I like that dystopian sci-fi stuff, Ghost in the Shell, like, Cyborg. You know, that all that concept. Right. I even, I even kind of like the Ghost in the Shell live action. I, I didn't hate it. I did not. I didn't like everything they did. I think it was stupid. But I think they they should have cast an Asian woman. Right. Kusanagi is a Japanese name. Whatever. Scarlett Johansson, whitewashing. She's getting butts in seats. It was fine. It's better than Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, I hate I had evolution. Say it. Yeah, I had to say it. That's that is just a shame. But you know, at least that movie is kind of entertainingly bad. Yeah. But anyway, um, I'm interested to see it. I'm going to give it a chance because I can talk about a lot of anime content on my channel. And I'm like, eh, I'll, I'll check it out. But um, I thought it was very interesting, though, when they're marketing it to a wider audience. We noticed. I think you, you pointed out to me, but over the original trailers for it, like yeah. when, last year, her eyes, the anime eyes, which is one of the big selling points, were huge. They mm-hmm. were like anime characters. And then they scaled them down considerably. Yep. They're still big, but it's like... It's not as ridiculous. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I, I was one of them. I like the big eyes. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, they should have kept it. You know? I mean, <laughs> it's like if you're watching it. Because, yes, it is. It's very noticeable when you first. Because when, uh, when we saw the trailer, mm-hmm. that's the first thing. You're like, wow, okay. But then you, it's something that you notice and then. It's not a big deal. I don't understand why they were thought it was too jarring. Like yeah. people wouldn't get it. I, yeah. I thought that was weird. Like they weren't that bold with that. Like they could have, they could have stuck with it. Actually, the only problem I kind of had with it was 
She was the only character designed like that, though. Right. That was that was a little off putting, maybe. Was she the only CGI character in the movie, though? Right. Fully CGI, I think so. I well, I well, um, I think they CGI'd over the actress. Oh, okay. I think they modified. I don't think she's totally CGI. Right, right, right. Okay. Kind of like um, uh, Ready Player One. Right. Okay. But she's the only one like that, though, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I, I guess they were trying to get because yeah because it's like maybe they were trying to get a more authentic anime look mm -hmm. for a movie after you know what happened with like Ghost in the Shell and stuff yeah but I feel like if you're gonna go CG then I mean then you that's the yeah that's the case then why not just find an actress who they can do that with I mean they could CG <laughs> the mechanical parts of her they could do they did it with Ghost in the Shell that's true. Yeah. Uh, so that's my only thing. Like, if huh. you're gonna go CG, go CG. You know, the whole way. I don't know. I, you know, I think it, it was a cool thing. It's definitely a cool experiment. But I don't know. I think that it is one of those things where it is tough to translate that very distinct style to a live action. Like, if they just cast a, an Asian woman or whoever in that role and said it was an, I'd be fine too. Right. Right. Like, so I mean, I thought it was interesting, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I thought, do you think they wanted to separate themselves? Maybe you think. The average person who doesn't know about anime would have thought it was like Ghost in the Shell, if it was a like just an actress with uh, CGI parts. Maybe, but I don't think they're selling it. They're not selling it as like an anime-based thing, or are they? Because they're. I don't think. So. Like, I think that's another reason why they changed the eyes. Because I don't think. Did they even say that in the trailers about based on based the, on like the classic manga yeah, or something? I don't. I don't, I don't seeing that. I don't think so. Like, I remember the name, and I'm like, that sounds, and it's like this, obs well, the anime is obscure, because it's like not much, but it's a right. manga that's been running for a long time. Right. So I was like, it's it's known in circles. Um, so, I don't know. They're not, they're obviously basing it on an anime fandom. Like, you'll pick up on that right. pretty quickly, but they're not blatantly saying that, because maybe Ghost in the Shell didn't do that well. Right. So it's a bit <laughs> of, you know. Which, to be honest, I was actually okay with that movie until the final fight. Remember? Do you remember in uh, the movie she fights the weird spider walker? Yeah, uh, yeah. They recreated that. Yeah. Did not look so no. good. <laughs> She's hopping around like Mario. Yeah. It's bad. No. But um, yeah, I'm gonna check it out at some point. I, yeah, I still want to see it. I think it'll be fine. I, I like Robert Rodriguez. I think he he's uh, an interesting director. I, he I think he's a an anime fan, so I think he's probably gonna. Yeah, he's pretty good. I like. Him. Play around with that. So there's that. Um, out moving on, I guess just to some upcoming movies that we know a little bit more about now. I mean, I've seen a couple. You, we saw a couple trailers for the new Hellboy. Mm -hmm. um, do you know the actor's name from Stranger Things? The play guy that plays the sheriff. I forget his name. Oh, uh, I can't remember his. That guy. Yeah. He's the new Hellboy. Um, I think he looks great. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the voice down. Perfect humor, humor. Um, the only thing it, it kind of because I you know mm -hmm. I went in the first thing when I because I'm not too familiar about the comics. Okay. So the first thing when I was gonna watch this trailer, first thing in my mind is Ron Perlman's mm -hmm. Hellboy. And he looks nothing like Ron Perlman. No, not really. However, in watching, doing some research a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, the the story that the movie's based on mostly, mm -hmm. he looks exactly like how Hellboy looks in those comics. Okay. The way his face is. Because you know with the cheekbone, how the cheekbone kind of looks, his face kind of looks scrunched a little bit. A little bit. That's how he looks in the comics. So they're actually trying to make it more accurate to the yeah, comics. Yeah, to okay. the comics. Okay. So now I, I get it. So with that, I think it looks it looks great. All right. I, and I really like the, that that scene of him just coming out with his full fire form with the flames yeah. and sort of, that looks cool yeah. um, I, I think it looks fun uh, I do think some of the they got they're throwing a lot of CGI monsters in there and yeah. they don't I think um, somebody was pointing out that that didn't look quite complete but I don't know I didn't think it looked that bad and for some reason when it's Hellboy I'm not too concerned about that stuff no because like the original Hellboy they used a lot of um, practical effects yeah. so it was if they balance it out, I think they'll be fine. I think, yeah. And they have people in there that I like. I like Daniel Day Kim. Mm -hmm. I didn't, who I didn't know, I didn't know he was in there. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Um, 
What's her name? Mila Mila, 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 Mila Jovovich. Jovovich. Yeah. Yep, she's, she's great. gonna be an evil witch. She's great. That's that. She's she cool. She looks like she doesn't age, by the way. Yeah, she looks like she's a uh, Fifth Element again. Uh, yeah, I've been in love with her since Fifth Element. Oh, uh, Lulu, Lulu, mm -hmm. Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. Oh, Fifth Element. That's a great movie. That's a great movie. Very good movie. It's one of uh, Honey Lemon's uh, favorite movies, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, very good. Um, Zorg, Gary Oldman can do anything. Ah. The great, great Gary Oldman. Yeah. You're a monster, Zorg. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but yeah, Hellboy looks pretty good. These are pretty easy so far. I think the last couple might be more uh, discussion heavy. But Detective Pikachu, like I, I don't. I want to stress this to you. I'm not saying I hate Pokemon. I grew up with the two. Right. I liked the cartoon, the anime. Right. You know, played some of the games. Sure. But I, I didn't think that like this of all the things to make a live action mainstream thing, Detective, Detective Pikachu, Pikachu yeah. voiced by effing Ron Reynolds. Yeah. Not only, not only does Pikachu look adorable, not only does the fur look real, which is hard to do in CGI, I've Crazy. heard. Not only are they introducing all these classic Pokemon, it looks funny. And they look good, too. They look good. Ryan Reynolds is voicing it, and it's, it's great. I'm not jarred by it. And it looks like it's also going to have kind of a serious story. And I'm so on board with this. And what what is going on? Like how can they put freaking Mewtwo in it? Mewtwo is like a twist. Like is he a villain? Is he like a supporting? I'm like Mewtwo is a whole other level. Yeah. I'm like, like I don't know. They're tapping into the nostalgia, and I thought it was a cool move. And I'm sure you'll agree with this, of just using the original 150 to cater to the oldest fans. Right. And then if sequels come in, they can cater to all those other next gen Pokemon. Oh, absolutely. Which I, which I don't know much about, but I thought it was cool. Like, and I'll be honest with you. If they did one with like a third or fourth or fifth generation, I wouldn't care as much because I didn't grow up with those. Because I don't know, yeah. I don't, I don't identify. And I don't play Pokemon Go, so I don't know. Yeah, and I don't either. I'm, I know I'm one of the people that doesn't, but but I saw I and every, the new trailer. I'm just like, man, I think this is gonna be a great time. It. I'm very <laughs> shocked. <laughs> Isn't it very weird? Shocked. Just I feel like it shouldn't work at all. I think all. we talked about you introduced. <laughs> This movie to me did in I? another podcast. I oh, think. okay. You told me about it, and then you were like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> what? And I saw the trailer. Trailer looked good. It seemed like every trailer <laughs> comes out. It looks better, and better. Like they show more and more, and I'm here for it. <laughs> I didn't even. And now, as a kid, I played Detective Pikachu. Uh huh. But it wasn't even like high on, Yeah, I wasn't even high on my list in terms of Pokemon. I was. Um, I love the show. Uh huh. And then I love playing uh, Pokemon on Game Boy. Did you uh, collect the cards at all? A little bit. A little bit. I dabbled in the cards a little bit. Yeah, that's so I, that's why I said I dabbled in everything Pokemon. I think every, go. I think everybody did for a while. I mean, like I, even I'll admit I'm not the most hardcore Pokemon fan, but dude, in the, at the height of that, in like the late '90s, early 2000s, oh, absolutely. I think everybody, so many every kid was touched by that. And I still love the theme song. Pokemon. I love it. No, it's true. Oh, <laughs> so cheesy, so That's inspirational, great. so great. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I think it's cool. And I, I, I always commend, I commend Ryan Reynolds on his ability to just speak in his regular speaking voice and <laughs> just be so uh, pleasant to listen to. Yeah, like, and I'm <laughs> not even thinking like, why is. Pikachu's talking like Deadpool. Like, of course. Why, why wouldn't he be? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I can't. I can't get into it because all I hear is Deadpool. Like, I, 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 that never happened. It didn't bother you. Yeah. That's just weird. It's uncanny. Yeah. It. It. Like I said, that is. It's one of those bizarre things. I just feel like it should not work. But I'm actually. It's probably one of the movies I'm most excited about right now. Yeah. I don't know. It's. It surprises me. Maybe um whoever did that CG they need to yeah Sonic they need to call them oh yeah oh yeah. you know if you want the fur to look nice you call that guy yeah <laughs> um that studio whoever did that and you know I I don't want to say that another video game movie will suck but I guess Detective Pikachu might break this mold a little hopefully hopefully but Sonic the Hedgehog I don't want to. I don't want to put this out there, but this always makes me nervous. I looked it up the other day just because I was like, "Oh yeah, it's coming out." They're giving it to a director, which is his first movie, first oh. time director, who's only done like a couple music videos. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, they're just so giving it to this poor guy. You want this assignment, films. buddy? Like, okay, you're giving it to this guy because guess what? Your career isn't going anywhere if you fucking screw oh, this up. Yeah, right. I'm just like, oh man. 
Uh, and I mean, I don't like. I said, I I'd like Sonic. I'd like Sonic to be good, sure. But like, I saw that another, and I'm like another uh, game that I grew up on. Mm-hmm. Ever beat? Did you beat them all? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I never have either. I think no. I Sonic and Knuckles was my favorites. I think Is it Sonic Three. No, Sonic Three. Sonic Three. When, when Knuckles was introduced. Right. That was my favorite. I read some of the comics back in the day. Oh. I enjoyed them. And I liked, I liked the shows, the cartoons. Yeah, cartoons were great. Cartoons were very good. But yeah, so I'm not as I'm not as invested in Sonic as I used to be. Um, but it would be cool to see them pull off a movie. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the last two I thought we might be able to talk about a little more. Because literally the one I just found out about today. And I guess I just told you. Um, yeah. I guess there's going to be another, and I'm assuming by the title, Rambo Last Blood might be the last movie. And you told me... That this could be connected to Rocky because uh, Stallone said what? He's no longer going to be playing Rocky. He gracefully bowed out of uh, being, so he won't be in Creed 3, basically. Hmm. So, so maybe he's, what, a, how old is he now? Like, pushing, is he in his 70s now? He, yeah, Late I 60s? think he might be pushing. You going to look it up for me? Yeah, you know. Cause, but yeah, like... Power of modern self. Yeah, it's going to check out, check it out on uh, Google for me. But yeah. I know he's getting up there. It might be his point where he might be retiring from action. Uh, that's what it sounds like. I mean, he can't do it forever. You true, know? true. So I get, But I thought that if that was the case, he would have... Maybe, he, I don't know if he knew that beforehand, because he didn't really build that into Creed too. 72. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So he's going to be 72, and he's going to be Rambo, and he's going to... Kick some so, ass again. With this name, Last title, should I book. say? Yeah, does this <laughs> mean that Rambo's gonna die? Is he killing off all? He can't kill off all his iconic characters. Yeah, that's kind of a bad, leave a bad taste in the mouth of people that follow them. Yeah. So, to be honest, if there was one that was gonna have a happy ending and live in the movie, you'd think it'd be Rocky rather than Rambo, who. In the original ending of the first movie, he was supposed to die. Right. So, but it became a hit. It became a hit. Oh well, uh, <laughs> let's turn this tragic Vietnam uh, story into an action <laughs> franchise. Yeah. What do you know? But I, you know, I, I'll be honest. Um, Are they gonna bring back Cobra? <laughs> Cobra over the top. Oh, you know what? I'd love to see <laughs> <laughs> over the top. I would love to see a sequel to Tango and Cash. <laughs> Get Kurt Russell's big again. That would be great. Why not? Well, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, we're till cops have to come out of retirement. Tango Cash, there's nobody there's that can handle moment. this case. Yep. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, I have my gold bladder replaced and I'm out arthritis and all my joints, and you can't find some other detective to take care of this? <laughs> I'm 72. I'm 72, what man. What do you think I'm going to do? I retired from the forest like 10 years ago. <laughs> I, I was doing desk work the last 20. Yeah. Oh, man. That would be great, though. <laughs> I, I can see Kurt Russell doing it though. That guy, that guy's pretty badass. He is. But um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. We could. I guess we could talk about the Rambo franchise a little. How, how do you feel about it? I guess. Um, like, what? Are you interested? You don't care? I, I don't know. I'm interested only because <laughs> then the la I can't remember the name of the last, the latest one. Uh, I didn't actually see it, so I don't remember. It was okay. I. I don't remember too much anyway. I just know that it was very graphic. Yes. Very graphic. It went over a little over. Oh, the top it was uh, John Rambo. There it is. Yeah. Um, I liked it. You know, it's a sign of the times, you know. Crazy yeah. action. You know, this one guy against all odds. <laughs> you know. So sure. it's one of those, you know. It, and now you watch them, it's like nostalgia. So for that sake, you know, I, I'm always going to check them out. Um which was the same reason why I watched all those Rockies. Mm -hmm. uh, it was well, it was only one after Rocky Five, right before Creed. Uh, Rocky Balboa, yeah. Yeah, which I, I thought think. was pretty decent. Mm. Oh, you weren't a fan? Oh, expand. Is it because you thought it was unbelievable him trying to take on a guy half his age? Like, gee, could Rocky really win? <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna put? Who's betting on that fight? Absolutely. Oh yeah, all my money on on Rocky. <laughs> but you know, I don't know promotional stuff. Well, what's the point of that movie? To prove that I still so, got yeah, it. basically. But okay, you. I mean, you could probably kick my ass, but like this guy, he was supposedly fighting a, a the boxer champ the who was top, like yeah, the top of his in his prime. prime. It's just not. And you are. What was he in his fifties then? Late fifties then, or something? Well, he might have been around sixty then. And he yeah, and you're about to fight. 
The best thing he did have a cool name. You know, Rocky's known for cool names. <laughs> Mason the Line Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Rocky villains channel their names from wrestling. I they have to. It must be because Clubber of Clubber Lang. Clubber Lang. Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn, oh, absolutely. Oh, man. You, you got to keep the tradition going. <laughs> I'm just... The one thing about Creed 3, though, I'm hoping that it's his own rival. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, technically, okay, you, you could like... say with Creed 1, it was his own, but it really... The fight was okay. about him... <laughs> Him fighting the shadow of his father. All right. That's so, really what it was. So what you want to see in, in Creed 3 is for him to finally step out of the shadow of the Rocky and, and have his, his own, father. And yeah. his father and kind of have his own conflict. Yeah, at this point. At this point. I agree. And I think he can do it because I think Creed, uh, I think I may have told you this. I don't know if you agree with me on this, but I think Creed is the best Rocky movie. I will say that. I love Creed, I love Creed. so it was great. much. Awesome. Uh, and I know some people might fight me on that, but like... Um, it was awesome. I think Creed was an excellent movie, just all around. Awesome. Creed two, good, maybe not quite as good, but it was almost as good. The the only and I'm, I'm uh, biased. Uh, <laughs> biased. Biased because I'm from Philly. Uh huh. So the scene when they're in oh it was shot in Philly too by the way for nice. those who didn't know that really is Philly the scene where they go to Max's Cheese Steaks that really is a real place in North Philly. Nice. The whole little scene where they're going over Philly slang and he's asking her what a John is. Oh, and the first one. And she, she, she didn't. Just can't really see that. For, if you're from Philly, you, you can hear if someone is from Philly when they say John, or if they've been in, in oh, Philly. Oh, so so with the cultural dialect of the area, you you told you could tell that her accent, how she pronounced, just wasn't quite right. No, it wasn't at all. All right, well. But that's just a small. Well, it's so well, small. Okay, like, for, you know, for the authenticity, I mean, most people wouldn't pick that up. But it's true. Like if you're from certain things from certain areas, you mm-hmm. pick up. But I think you'd say that the Rocky franchise is still like the Philadelphia franchise. Absolutely, you know, it's yeah. like that's like the Philly movie. And even then, with that being said, I'm just nitpicking. I really didn't. <laughs> I know. I really didn't. No, but you're right. I it's, still think I, that they captured. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's terrible. They didn't say it right now. <laughs> I still think that, like the original Rocky movies, mm-hmm. they captured the spirit of Philly and that underdog Philly fighter, mm-hmm. especially because Philly is a boxing town, known for boxers mm-hmm. too, among other things. But um, they captured that Philly spirit, mm-hmm. like they did in the seventies and eighties with Rocky, the original. But now, like when they introduced the bike culture, just little things. Oh like, yeah, that's real too. The bike culture, the dirt bikes. Stuff, I didn't know that. That's yeah, that's real. In the Frankfurt area, like all that's real. Everything he said, <laughs> like we're in Frankfurt. This is how we do it. Like, what's with all the motorcycles? That's what they do. Right? That's real. Everything, like um, they really captured that. Hmm. So I, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, and like I said, and it's not to say what I said earlier. Not to say that those stories were bad. Uh huh. It's just that maybe, like we said, he he he'll because he did that. He battled his the shadow of his father. Mm-hmm. He overcame that. Now he kind of did it again, kind of, and kind of was for Rocky too with Creed. Yeah, he did. He did. He did kind of Drago son. Like he he did kind of repeat sort of the same story. Like, ah, you you don't want to prove to be your father. You got to be yourself. I'm like, I feel you're right. You did kind of already do this, right? Yeah, you're proving yourself again. Even though it's the son, it's not Drago, but it's like you killed. It's a revenge thing. Like in a way, it's like it's. It's that I was thinking. Like you should hate Drago. Like, not Drago's son. Right. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to channel my aggression against this guy yeah. who has done nothing to me. Like, that's, that was because a little... Because of your father. Because of your dad. I'm going to I'm gonna beat you and possibly kill you because of your dad. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it. he should have, you know, wanted to go after him more. Right, right. Which wouldn't have worked, but I think they could have played more with that. Yeah. So, I agree. It, but it was interesting. So, yeah, all I'm saying, and now I hope they just pick a new person. Don't have him fighting Clubber Lang's son. Junior? <laughs> we don't need... Uh, we Clubber don't Lang's need, nephew. Yes. Yeah. No, I, dis- no, I disagree. That. I have the Tiger remix. Tommy Gunn's son. None of that. Revenge. You betrayed me, Rocky. <laughs> oh, Everyone babe. who disrespected Rocky. <laughs> no, no. Actually, you're wrong. Next next bunch of movies. 
Okay, we got it. We got Clover Lang Jr. We got Tommy Gunn's nephew. We got Mason Dixon's fucking cousin, like fucking Atlanta. I don't know. Atlanta Savannah. Atlanta Savannah. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Just well, at least they, they got a blueprint, but don't do that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm sure you'd probably get butts and seats, but don't don't feed too much on nostalgia. It's, that does get old. Anyway, I know the kid, the battery's kind of on its last bar, so I did want to have a little discussion because Dark Phoenix is, um, I think, kind of the end of an era. I mean, I think this is the end of the X Men franchise. By Fox that started in 2000. Yeah. This might be the last one, which is basically just doing X Men 3 again, hopefully better. Um, and I don't know. I'm a big fan of these movies overall. I love the X Men. I, I love them for the most part. And I, overlooking the bad ones, of course. Um, X Men 3. I, I, yeah, I, X Men 3 was bad, but, <laughs> but, but Origins was worse. Wolverine Origins was worse. But overall, yeah. I, overall I like them. So for me, it's kind of nostalgic, but oh. I, I've talked to some people about. You said oranges. I thought about Deadpool. Yeah, ex oh. exactly. <laughs> it's not a perfect series, but overall, I like it. And I, I've asked some people about it, and I'm wondering: Am I like one of the few people that's actually excited for this movie? Because I, I, I don't know. I, I guess because I like the the character and the Dark Phoenix storyline, I'd like to see them get it right. But if they're not going to have the cosmic alien stuff, I mean, I guess maybe it won't be as cool, but. I, I don't know, I want your take on it, because I, I, like, how do you feel? This might be the culmination, in a way. From what I saw in the trailers, you're right. The Cosmic Alien stuff will be great, because then it's closer to the comics. Mm -hmm. And even the cartoon, because it did go into that a little bit. Oh, absolutely. But I think in the movies, it's too grand of a scale to do that. But if they bring them into Marvel MCU, like, we can finally get the Shi'ar, and the right. the Kree, and the Scrolls and the Brood, and... And that's what the X-Men do. They go out into space, they fight aliens, guys. That's what the X-Men does. They fight the weird stuff. They go and to weird maybe they might do that. Maybe the, you think that Deadpool will just show up with like a, a new Wolverine or something at the end? <laughs> with Spider-Man, like Tom Hardy maybe, shows up? You know, because the universe, because of Thanos. If they step into the MCU, the, the MCU is already into the cosmic. They're right. in there. With the quantum, maybe they'll open up some rift and... Oops, come in and that's how they beat Thanos. I don't know, like <laughs> Phoenix, the Phoenix Force. Hey, she could do it. She, she could, could do it. That's strong. So I, I don't know. I, I it mean, we're joking, but with the uh, rights transferred now, yeah, it could happen. Could happen. We don't know. That's why. But so I don't know. But I just feel like there isn't that much hype for it. Maybe because Logan sort of ended it in a lot of people's minds. I think so. I think yes. I think maybe people thought that with that, that was the end of the. X Men movies, mm. and maybe some people don't want to see an X Men movie without Hugh Jackman. Is because that's still the case. Like people are saying, like, okay, if you recast, if you bring um, the X Men to the MCU, you're recasting. That's Everybody. the that's the only thing that they talk about though. Like, who's going to be Wolverine now? They don't mention like who, <laughs> who's going to be Professor X, who's going to be Magneto, well, Cyclops. We they don't, don't care. care. They don't care. Who's going to be Wolverine? <laughs> the big question. <laughs> Can't recast him yet. It'd be a bad idea. Yeah. But it's interesting because Days of Future Past kind of fixed some of the problems. That was awesome because of that. And in a way, the ending of that movie, even if it wasn't perfect, was kind of an ending to those characters, the original right. cast. Right. So okay, that you could have ended it there. Then Logan. Potentially an ending, maybe to at least one other universe, but very yeah. much this Wolverine's and his the end of his story. Right. But now Dark Phoenix is like, is this an afterthought or is this hoping to continue on with these characters with MCU somehow or is this I just think like that's the I think that's the mystery because I like the cast. I like the first class X Men. I like James McAvoy's Professor He's X. Great. Um, you know the uh, wow, I'm blanking. Um, Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender is Magneto's awesome. Mm -hmm. I like their Beast, uh, Nicholas Holt, um, mm -hmm. everybody. I like I like it. I like. I don't know that Apocalypse was kind of iffy, yeah. but but I liked the. It felt like an eighties X Men. I felt like I was watching the nineties uh, cartoon, kind of. Yeah. So I speaking I'm, of that, Olivia Munn won't be back. And um, you know, I, Psylocke. Olivia Munn's great, and she looked like Psylocke. She did. She looked she like did. Psylocke, and and I know maybe that's just like the. The kid in me, but like you, you watch these, you know, comic book stories come to life, and you see what the MCU is doing. I want to see more of the brightly colored X Men, right. and I'm like, maybe I don't know. Could we see that with these characters, or just let them go and let Marvel take a crap at it? And I even like, uh, I can't remember 
his name? Quicksilver. Oh, yeah, Quicksilver. Uh, I usually know his name because he's in, like, every season of American Horror Story. Time in a bottle. Uh, but, yeah, he's... He, <laughs> slow to motion me, scenes. He makes those movies. I like him better than uh, MCU Quicksilver. Well, he's dead. Spoilers from Age I mean, of Ultron yeah, if you, you haven't seen that. Jeez. <laughs> Please. Why are you listening to this? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but you're right. I I liked him a lot better than than Marvel's Quicksilver. So mm-hmm. they got some. So if you, you want to keep have them keep him, if possible, that would be yeah, that would be cool. Um, but that's the thing. If if they bring that, which I think they will, because mm-hmm. they do see that the X Men is a money maker. Yes. So they will bring them over. I don't think they're gonna recast anybody because it's gonna be like a clean slate. Huh. Um, so like you were saying earlier, will it be an end of, like, I think it will be the end of the Fox era, X-Men characters, hmm. wow. but I do think that the, from the trailers, it already looks better than X-Men 3. I hope so. That wouldn't be hard to do, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Um, I think the Jean as I, Phoenix, I, she looks... Uh, she looks closer to how she should be as the Phoenix. The Phoenix, and I like um, I forget her name, but uh, uh, Sansa from uh, yeah, Game of Thrones. I, I yeah. liked her. I thought she was good. Yeah. As a uh, Jean, I like the guy they got to play. Sansa. Like I like the cast. Yeah. So I mean, who's all Zorn Ready Player One, which we haven't seen. Oh, that, I, I have seen it actually. Finally. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it changed my life. Well, yeah. yeah but that was pretty good. It was way better than I, I was anticipating. I, I didn't. I thought. The, I I know this is one issue. I guess with the book that translated, I mm-hmm. did think that there was a lot of exposition, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was it was fun. I thought it was cool. I liked a lot of the, um, liked a lot of the cameos. Right. And I thought that the visuals were interesting. I think they did a great job of all those kids because that could easily be muddled with all those. <laughs> References and cameos, you could easily. But it makes sense because, like, if you had one big collective thing and you could get like your avatar to be a certain upgrade for a certain character, you know, you're just talking to one buddy and he looks like Robocop or he looks like a T Rex or <laughs> yeah. Batman. Like, it's it's cool. Like, you know, I, I I like that. So, that that is an interesting idea of the ultimate, I guess, where where virtual reality video games could go. Yeah, that could be a reality. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But um. But yeah, see the. I forgot his name. But <laughs> Ready Player One guy. Yeah, he's Cyclops. Um, he's no um, original Cyclops guy, though. Oh, I know you're talking about. Uh, James yeah. Marsden. There it is. The guy that always can never get the girl in every movie he's in. <laughs> he's the guy that always is the second guy. You know what I mean? He's always like he wasn't. He's Cyclops. He was the boyfriend of Superman Returns. Which is interesting, considering <laughs> he left. he's a handsome guy. Yeah. You would think that he would get the girl. But in a lot of those movies, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> and, Actually, he kind of had the girl, but he, lo- he loses her to Wolverine. Wolverine. I guess that's the dynamic. Wolverine's the bad boy. Though, I, I'll i be honest, I, from a lot of the comics that I read, and if you remember the cartoon, the 90s cartoon, I never got the impression that Gene was in love with Wolverine. He just pined for her and was jealous of Cyclops. I didn't think that she was really that interested in him generally. Yeah. And in the movies, like, okay, she knows that he's flirting with her, but she's like, not really. Reciprocating a little bit not, in the movie. Not, re- not that yeah. much, though. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you think that's, like, a legit, then? I mean, I don't, was he ever really a threat? Remember, what did he say in X-Men? Like, he's like, you gonna, <laughs> do you gonna tell me to stay away from your girl? And if I, she wasn't my girl, I you know, wouldn't have to do yeah. that. So yeah. he, he wasn't worried about it at all. Yeah. So I don't know. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I feel. I'm just thinking of, they did a they did a lot of stuff wrong. <laughs> like killing like everybody right away. Yeah, especially X Men Three. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you my favorite line in, in X Men Three. Can you guess what it is? No, what is it? Um. It's very me, okay? You probably appreciate this. When even as a teenager I, I burst out laughing because I thought it was awesome. When Magneto literally lifts like the San Francisco bridge mm-hmm. to go take it over to the island, and he's like, Charles always did want to build bridges. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. And I mean, like, that's some cheesy shit, that but I'm like, you. but I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, you. that was really good. <laughs> but, um, literally the only thing I really like about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that scene right there. Pretty much. Um, I think I liked some of the side. Vi- like, some of the, some of the effects were cool. Yeah, I did kind of like the effect, like when um, Jean basically is not controlling her powers, and the only one who could go up to her is Wolverine because he can regenerate. And that part was cool. He keeps his skin and stuff keep coming, but coming back. And I did like that. It looked cool. That was that was decent. Um, yeah, there were there were a lot of issues with it though. X Men Three is probably nobody's favorite X Men movie, um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I'm interested to see Dark Phoenix. I hope it's good, but I guess either way, it's it is the end of an era, and we're probably gonna get some new, probably flashier, crazier, epic level X. You know, that's what should happen. If if somehow things start to lose steam with the MCU, think about it. They got the Fantastic Four and X Men. They could focus on them for a while to give people a break while they give time to recast Tony and all the other people. That's a good point. Because think about how many stories and how many X Men characters there are. Hundreds. And Hundreds. They, they would need the X Men because they need another big bad if they're going to do like after Ooh, Thanos. They got like Apocalypse. They got Mister Sinister. They got uh, the Sentinels. Galactus, Doctor Doom. Oh yeah, Doctor so Doom. So they need these to people. kind of yeah. You've been you've been picking off like these more obscure villains like right. like <laughs> Loki and Red Skull. You made them cooler, but they weren't really like as Not big. Really, yeah. They weren't Doctor Doom or yeah. Galactus, like you know. <laughs> so yeah, so you need you're right. another. You're going Thanos level. You got a Galactus, well, or yeah, or um, yeah, Doctor Doom has to happen. The Legion of Evil, like a bunch of the villains together. And we had the, the theory before about Dormammu Ooh. taking this, you know, physical, more of a physical form. And what if they brought in, like, the Beyonder and all those people? Uh-oh. And they could, if they wanted to go really crazy, they could go for, like, Monitor versus Anti-Monitor. I was just thinking go, that. What, what can we go bigger than Galactus? Be, oh, my goodness. That would be <laughs> ridiculous. The screen literally rips and yeah, the movie turns off. The franchise is over. They're all that's dead. That's the last movie. <laughs> that's the, Everyone's dead. Like, literally, there'll be a split it's in the him. screen and... That's okay. It. <laughs> That's it. Like, like, wait, is the has the has the projector broken? Like, <laughs> no. I uh, just want to come out and tell you, this is how the franchise ends. There's no after there's, credit scene. There's, there's, there's too nothing. there's too much going on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the universe just caved in. Oh shit. Oh god. But that would be kind of great. I would. I'll be here for it. <laughs> I would. I would be here for it. Oh my. Um. Well, now. Okay. Well, there you go. If anybody uh, over at uh, Marvel Studios hears this or Disney, <laughs> you get free advice. If if people are worried about what we're going to do after, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and everybody leaves, I think they've got plenty of miles to go yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, or, well, I know we were talking about it a little bit before the show, but sometimes it goes back and forth among people that I know that like really like movies and they're film critics and whatever, mm-hmm. about when the superhero bubble will burst, when it will become kind of... A little more passe. It won't be like the biggest thing like westerns or musicals back in the day. Mm-hmm. If you had to guess, how long would you say it would get before it stops making the money it has been making? And it's not the the cultural phenomenon. And I know we could theoretically have them go forever, and they probably always will to some extent, but I think it has to teeter out a bit eventually. You know? I, what, do you, what do you think? Because people were thrown out like, oh, like one guy was like, oh, man, I think Ant-Man's going to be it. Or, you know, that'll be the word ends or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. like, I kind of thought that, too, when I first heard that it was coming out. Yeah, some people said that. And that wasn't like a mega hit. But and I seen how much money it made. I thought it was going to bomb. Yeah, but hey, they, they made that pretty enjoyable. Uh, yeah. So, And I think that proves a lot. So I, I don't know. Do you think they've got another... Decade in them, or I think 20? so. I was I was gonna say at least at least ten years. At least ten years. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say. I mean, I could say twenty, but like I think beyond that, I don't know because I'm thinking because like this whole cycle. How long was this era? Well, phase. Two, or two, well, two thousand eight to this point, like the four three is it three phases? Yeah. So for their three phases, about four years. It it was about eleven years, so a good decade of this. And they could do it again. They probably could. So uh, that's what I mean. 
like we were saying before the show, now it's to a point where people are being raised in this uh, culture, if you will. Mm -hmm. Even the people who aren't comic book readers, mm -hmm. they like the movies. Mm -hmm. So they come, they look, and they've been watching the movies since they were kids, <laughs> young teens, young adults, and they're growing up with the movies. And now they have kids, and they're taking their kids, uh -huh. and so on and so forth. It's it's a good cycle, you know. Yeah. You're right. So it's kind of it becomes a family tradition, like you said, for a lot of people. And and I know for at this point for me, it, it has almost become standard. But I I can't say that I'm I'm really that bored of it. Like I keep saying to myself, ah, oh, I might get a little tired of it because I do think there's a lot of superhero movies. But at least with Marvel, I'm generally not tired of them. Yeah, I'm not. And I'm like, well, they come out with one or two or three a year, and I'm like, I I try to get together with my friends or. Whoever, and we try to see him. I try to see him opening night. I like to, you know. I enjoy, I, uh, I enjoy them. I even still look forward to DC movies. <laughs> I don't look forward to them as much, uh, but I still go see them because I'm a big enough fan. But you didn't see Aquaman yet. I haven't. You didn't see Aquaman, um, but I don't, I'll tell you what I am looking forward to. I'm interested in Shazam. And I am interested. I'm, I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman too. Mm. I am for sure. But I know we've talked about it before. And I mean, while we're burning time, like I have no idea what DC's doing. You know, I know we've been saying that a lot. I as because no, I, I, I remember they don't know what they're because doing. Because I remember, I saw this article for tonight that's saying I, uh, the CEO confirmed they are done with the DCEU, which I thought we already. I swore that they said that before. With the the universes, uh, and worlds the of DC, worlds of DC. Well, before that, they were saying they weren't <laughs> doing any cohesive storylines. Then they were. Well, then they weren't. And, and honestly, because they're changing it to worlds of DC, but then they didn't really go move forward with that. Now they're not again. I, well, it's clear they don't know what to do, and the battery's going low. Um, and I just want to say, I'll just to end it. You know, with Wonder Woman still there, I guess they could just soft reboot it. Yeah, I mean they're they're doing sequels, so they're gonna. I think, I think in with Aquaman made money. I think Shazam will make money. Wonder Woman will make money, and they're gonna if they keep making money, they will come back and they will be cohesive again. That'll be the big outlier. That will be the money, and we'll say always is the money. Yeah. All right, man. Well, once again, thank you for coming on. Hey, of course. And I'm sure I'll, I'll hear from you again. Yes. All right, buddy. If you're listening, thank you, and let us know what you think of the comments below. Stay magical.